What's up, guys? Back at it again with another episode of Local Legends. Um, today, we have a very special guest. This is a long time coming. You. Me. What's up, bro? What's going on, dude? Introduce yourself to the people. Um, I am Dennis Duncan. What up? Uh, most people call me D. That's what most people know me as. So, um, other than that, uh, what, like what I do? Yeah, what, what you about? What you do for the people, bro? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm the music director for Living Word Church in Dayton. Cool. And, uh, play guitar, bass. Plays uh, guitar. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, for the people, anyways. Whatever. Um, D is basically what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> so, I'm glad oh, you're yeah. here. I'm glad you're here. And we have an exciting round of questions coming can't up. I can't wait. So, basically how this goes, um, if you're new to watching, this is an episode called Local Legends, and I interview some locals that are legends. Pretty self-explanatory, right? Um, basically, we want to I see... feel like you might be um, stretching the Whatever, thing. whatever. Basically, uh, we want to talk to um, some locals that impact their community through music, and other stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So um, we have a couple of um, questions that are fan favorites that we ask everybody. And then we have some questions that will be particular, per, particular to you. Okay. So the first question that we always ask everybody is, what is your first musical memory? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Like as far as playing goes? Usually it's like... Um, or like my usually it's like your spark of inspiration it's like oh that's oh i know i want to do music like okay this that is super, point in this time. is super funny but it's kind of Let, let's roll with it so as a kid i would go to my grandparents all the time and um my grandma was like um like just one of those like praying grandmas like all the time like kneeled down in her bed all the time praying but yeah. they would watch the gaithers and so like they'd have these big choirs and stuff and there'd be bass singers and I would li I'd be sitting there watching that with my grandpa I'm like grandpa what is like that uh, that guy singing bass like that's cool <laughs> and then like I don't know who, if I was talking to somebody or whatever but like I I made the connection with bass vocals to bass guitar right and so like I knew from that that I wanted to do whatever was low like whatever that meant yes like, exactly so, bro definitely my first memory or my first like like thing to Right. Hey, I want to be in music. Exactly. So, uh, I, I've already I already know the story, but I guess we'll tell for the people. What was your like first um, instrument um, that you like brought yourself up on? So that was bass. Um, yeah, when I turned thirteen, uh, my brother in law he um, he's he's musical and uh, he actually had like a old Japanese P bass. Sick. Uh, that he that he gave me on Christmas Day when I was oh thirteen. My gosh. Yeah, in like a crate amp. Nice. So yeah, that that's was what my, everybody that was my everybody first starts one. on. That's special. Crate, yeah, that's super cool, bro. So obviously you're a little older, a little wiser now. <laughs> um, so let's just walk on the path on where you are today. How you've grown as a musician. Uh, obviously you've picked up the guitar. And now you're an MD. Yeah. So, um, you can, we can do like cliff notes. You don't have to go like super in depth. Yeah. Just a couple points along the way. Okay. Well, uh, played bass, instantly got involved with, uh, my youth group at the time, playing bass for them. Um, fast forward a few years, the worship leader of that youth group stepped down, and my pastor looked at me and he's like, You're all I got. You're the guy. I'm like, um, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so went to like Guitar Center, bought a Taylor 110, like the cheapest acoustic known to man. And actually, I led from bass um, for quite a while because we didn't have another bass player. Yeah. So I led worship and played bass. And then like Sick. learning guitar at the same time. Uh, and uh, so that was kind of that sparked the guitar thing. And then. 
Oh, that was a slippery slope of just like (laughs) (laughs) chasing after guitars and tone and and you name it. Um, And still. Yeah, and still to this day, yeah. So uh, from there, played at uh, Living Word, which is my home church, um, and uh, went to uh, Open Bible Christian for around seven years or so, um, and then... Um, came back to living word and the MD thing just kind of got thrown in my lap. Really. It's kind of like another one of those situations where I was like, uh, they're like, do you want to do this? I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing, but let's, let's go for it. it (laughs) So figuring that out as we go, but I, I feel like it's been good. So it's been fun. Right. So, um, what are like, walk us through some of your roles as MD, like, um, Explain that to like maybe somebody that doesn't really know what that position is or, you know, what they do. So one of the main things that I do, um, like on a Sunday morning, um, I have a microphone on stage, but uh, I'm not in, you know, the house. I'm in everybody's ears. Right. So um, uh, especially like on a live section, if we're not using click or tracks or whatever, I can direct the band, count us in on a live section. I can tell us what note to end on, what chords to hit. If there's a tricky section in a song, I can say, Hey, you know, we got to do one, four, five here or whatever, you know, right. Something different. Um, that's, that's what I would say. The main thing is just, uh, giving direction for the band. Um, but also like I do some stuff with Ableton and, um, also like, per- I, you know, preparing the rest of the musicians to know what they need to do. Exactly. So basically you're the band director and you run, um, make sure everybody runs smoothly. Mm -hmm. Um, what, Oh, my bad. What, um, so people, people that don't have an MD at their church, um, or they're just running tracks or not even to that point. Um, you know, I, I've heard so many, uh, conversations about how do you worship if you have a click in your ear, if you have um, somebody yelling, right. yelling, if you have somebody yelling uh, at co- times, court. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you have somebody yelling chords, <laughs> if you have somebody yelling chords at you or whatever. So how do you, how do you worship while you're also, um, you know, directing the band? So. Um, as far as like the click thing goes, I thought that too. Like when we first, when yeah. I first started playing with the click, I'm like, there's no way I can engage in worship and, and fall like, but it, it becomes like part of it. It's the where, opposite. I feel yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. Like it almost is more like now that you're, that I'm used to, it's almost more distracting to not have it yeah. because then I feel like there's an extra focus you have to have. Right. Whereas the click kind of is like this, like backbone of everything. Yeah. It just gives you the direction. Um, it doesn't have to, there's no guesswork. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's <clears throat> my bad. That's probably how I think that's how a lot of people start. Cause when I started, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is terrible. No way, yeah. This is the worst. It took me so long to get used to it. But like you said, now it's almost, it's like a part of the song, right? Yeah. Because it's like, it's literally the, yeah. the beat of the song and it's, it makes it so much easier to play. And I think it makes it easier to even focus on not playing. Like you yeah. focus on your surroundings more when you have it in my case anyway. Yeah. But as far as like, as far as like the other team, like worshiping with an MD, um, I, I'm not super like vocal in the MD mic, um, unless I feel like it's necessary. Um, some people like go really crazy with it and they're talking the Um, whole time. Yeah. And, and that can be distracting. I feel like, um, but, and, but there's times like, I mean, like in a, in a real like big worship moment, we're all like, you know, encourage the band. We're like, let's go guys. Like, yeah. like bring it, you know, this time or whatever, or even like, like I'll pull back from the mic a lot of times, but I'll start singing or, or all like, you know, woo, whatever, yeah. you know, like, you know, just <laughs> right. getting into it. And I, I feel like sometimes that energy transfers to the band too, because they're, exactly. they're feeling my energy and you right. Know. Cause I, I feel like a lot of people have like preconceived notion of like, Oh, you know, it's like, he's in there all the time. Like, yelling at the band telling them what to do but it's like but you're right it's usually and mostly uh when it's needed or 
just like if somebody gets off or something, you just right. get everybody back on and make sure yeah. everybody's trucking along. For sure. So um, you also lead. Uh, so you lead from the guitar most of the most of the time. Yeah. And you also lead with your wife. Right? Yeah. So Brooklyn, uh, she sings on the team as well. So that's really cool. That's super awesome. Yeah. So what is it She's like? Amazing. What is it like uh, leading with her and just like the experience of just both of you being on the same stage? So that's that's really awesome because um, like it's 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 when you're especially when you're in like a demand like I, sh- I shouldn't I don't know how to word this exactly. But like when I'm on there every week or, or I'm up on stage every week, like if somebody wasn't involved at all, like that's hard to like you know, bridge the gap between like I'm there all the time and they're not at Mm -hmm. all. So like having, having a a mutual need for both, you know, like me and her, that helps a lot. Yeah. You know, we kind of share that. Not, I won't say like a burden, it's not a burden, but like share that load, like to where it's like, okay, Thursday night we have practice. Mm -hmm. Sunday we have to get up early for church. Right. Do you guys, uh, you guys like practice down in the living room and, so yeah, sometimes like sometimes um you know I'll like I'll play along to the tracks and sing melodies so she can harmonize mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, I think it'd be cool to have her on here, bro. Yeah, absolutely. She, Definitely a legend. She's super musical and runs her own business. And yeah. Is a mom. Yep. Which automatically qualifies you, bro. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. So, um all right. So we've gone through the churchy stuff. Um now let's get into the gear. Okay. Let's do it. So, this is um, where it'll get lengthy, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. So, I like to just blame D for just <laughs> <laughs> so for just multiple guitars just circulating through. No, I'm just playing. Um, but also, but you have exquisite taste in, in uh in some gear. So, so do you. <laughs> so, um, let's. I guess let's kind of. Let's just figure stuff out about you. Where did the the taste for exquisity just start, bro? Dude, I don't know. Well, like, first let's do this. Okay. So oh, I'm a oh, little yeah. I'm a little parched. We're gonna steal. I something. almost reached for it earlier. I'm like, wait, it's not open. We're gonna steal something from another show, but that's all right. All right, ready? One, Kudos if you if you know what show. One, two, three. <laughs> Ooh, that was perfect timing. Watch this. Oh yeah. People are gonna hate I don't me have for a condenser, that. so yeah, my bad. Okay, so anyway, where did the the boutique um, gear, <clears throat> man, the need for it? Where did it start? So I don't know. Like, I'm just like I feel like with everything, like I don't want like I want I want quality. Okay. Like it's just like any anything I'm into. It's like I don't want the cheap thing. Like not not because I'm like loaded or anything. Like it has nothing to do with that. It's just like I I want quality. If I'm gonna buy right anything, I want it to be like high quality. Um, so that's that's part of it. Um, that goes with everything that I'm into, not just guitars. But I think I got a good second reason. Second reason, it's freaking cool. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> no, a good reason. I'm just playing. Uh, that I'm kind of the same way. Like I don't. I don't hate cheap cheap stuff. Sure, and, and yeah. like I've had cheap stuff. Exactly, it's good. And like too. you can play, you can play whatever you want. <clears throat> but I I feel like especially in like the guitar world or whatever the gear community or whatever that um, there's a lot of hate for like people that love cheap stuff, and there's a lot of hate for the Absolutely, opposite. Yeah. It's like people that like to buy the expensive stuff. It's like there's hate on both ends. Oh it's yeah. Like, I don't understand. You want to feel bad about your purchase? Just post it on like some kind of like like gear page, right. the gear page or something. They're gonna exactly. like, don't you know that that was during the the bad era of that company? Like what? Like yeah, is that a just, thing? Just like, let me play, bro. Yeah. Just let me enjoy this guitar. So like one like I mean okay when I started playing bass like I had that Japan P bass, but I was already starting off strong. Yeah, I was I was thirteen, and I worked with my dad. You know, I made money. Like literally six months later, I went and bought an American Jazz five string, Sick. and I still play it to this is day. That your, is that your oldest piece of gear? <clears throat> I mean, outside of the well, P bass. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, right? for sure, definitely. You I mean, still have that. You still have the J. Yeah, I have both. Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess you have you seen the P bass? I don't know. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> we're gonna just go off yeah. on a rabbit hole here. Uh, but anyways, uh, I got I got notes. We can keep on track. It's fine. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just roll with it. But the boutique thing, I don't know. It's just it's just like the the more boutique, like the more different and the cooler it is. And right, and it's know. like uh, like with our experience with stuff that we both have, it's like it's different. Yeah, like we we both played Fenders and gibsons and all that but i mean it's cool obviously like we have fenders and gibsons and stuff yeah. but um like when you get into the more boutique realm you get some different options it's For just sure. different i've always said like a thousand dollar guitar is twice as good as a 500 hundred dollar guitar but a three thousand dollar guitar is not three times as good as a thousand dollar guitar right. but there's other things you get with that exactly so that's a great way to put it so i kind of Usually for this show, um, I come up with these questions beforehand and then I send them to my guest and if they want, usually we, I have an option of you can, you can have the questions or you can just fly off the dome. So today we're flying off the dome. And then I also asked, uh, for something a little special. I said, get your, um, like you said, desert Island guitar. I say like. Your house is burning down, and you have to grab one guitar. You grab that one. Yeah, actually, the guitar I picked made more sense for how you described it than the Desert Island, I feel like. But yeah, right. So, let's see what it is, bro. Oh, my gosh. Are you going to go get it? Yeah, go oh, grab yeah. it. So, would this reach or no? Yeah, it should. I guess I should. I guess we should have thought of this beforehand, but it's all right. <laughs> she can cut this if it gets too long. But I'll basically just talk to the camera. Basically, D has an insane collection which I want to do a video on eventually and I, I I knew this I knew this question would be so hard for him because he has so many good guitars and so many that he loves for certain things and I was like this is gonna be hard for him so I'm I don't know what it is so I'm I'm excited to see what you picked do you want to do the honors you want to open it up sure let's do it so I probably just like walked right in front of your video as you're that's all right but we, our setup here. We like to fly off the. Oh man, I'm nervous. Is that bad? <laughs> okay, so can you get? Can you? You want to make a guess? Let, let me. Let me ask you like a couple questions first. Okay. Before I, because I haven't. I still haven't seen it. Um, have I played this? No. Okay. You're, yeah. Oh, that narrative. I right think I know what it is though. Okay. I think I know what it is. Is it a Nova? No. Oh, I don't know what it is. I thought it was the Miris. No. I'm going to touch it. It's the Frank, probably. It is. No. Oh, my gosh, bro. I did not expect this. You haven't even seen it. Uh, not in person, anyways. It, oh, my gosh. This is crazy in person. Sorry. I'm just taking this in with everyone. Oh, my gosh. So, this is a Gretsch Custom Shop Penguin. Steven Stern master built. Give us, give us some specs while I just look at it. So the reason I'm picking this, not only is it's the most expensive guitar I have electric. So that's, that's, that's one reason. <laughs> it's like <you laughs> grab the most expensive one right, to go. Yeah, right. But like I had the most input on this guitar as far as like building it from the ground up. Like, you know, I, I have a oh, three, it'll be three Novos here by Wednesday. But, uh, uh <laughs> But uh, those, like, I didn't have any input on how they were built. Like, the one was spec like, uh, pretty much how I would spec one, but I still didn't, like, spec it. So this guitar, um, I spec'd. It's a Penguin. Um, this is, like, a drum wrap. Yeah. I Okay, so I feel special. I just, I'm just along for the ride, obviously. But I was pretty much there when you spec this. Yes. And because we just talked for, like, three hours about about it and i was so excited and this is the first time i've actually seen it so this is sick so i got to pick basically every like you know i got to pick out like what type of gretsch knobs went here like what color guard like the binding like i obviously added the middle pickup which is not a standard option um the the back and sides color i spec the inlays the tuners the bridge, like everything I chose. Right. So. And like you said, I kind of, I kind of cut you off, but this, this was a drum wrap, 
Well, yeah. Was this a Gretsch, a Gretsch drum ramp? No, it's like another company that, and he said that they had used those before. So I just kind of like, I actually picked, to, actually, I'm, I'm glad I changed, but I actually had like a, this is called pink glass glitter. Mm-hmm. And I picked like a gray one because I'm like, yeah, right. I, I, I don't know, for some reason, like I was just thinking like, you're on a kick. Yeah. You I just was, got the jazz master or yeah, something like that. Something like that. But, and then I'm like, no, like, I think I need to go like crazy with this and go pink or something. I'm glad so. you did, bro. This is sick. So yeah. Harry, I'm burping with a carbonated drink, so. Yeah, I know. See, that's the vet. Anyway, I will be honest. I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be the Marius 100%. So I'm generally, generally, Do you and, know my, uh, and happily surprised. Honorable mention is? Go, go grab it. Go grab the honorable mention. We, why not? This is, this is my show. We can do what we want. <laughs> Look at this guitar. So, I, I guess I'll just, I'll just do the, I'm just kind of speechless. I don't even know what to say. This thing is beautiful. What's, what's like the, what's our switching options? So, this is the selector. So, we have neck, these two, and then just the bridge. Nice. This here is actually just for the middle pickup. So, in the middle, it's off. And up or down, it's on. Nice. And then this is the tone switch. Ah. So middle is like wide open tone, and then I can't remember if it's up or down. There's like a like a, a mild like tone halfway off mm-hmm. setting, and then there's like a tone all the way down. Three volumes. Three volumes and master. Master. Yeah. Nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 Wow. I didn't. I didn't expect that. I, you had so much confidence in me because you said I could guess, and I had that was literally way down the list. I'll be, I'll be honest. I'll be straight up honest. It was way down the list. But what a solid choice. Okay, so this is the if you could hang on. I also had the Lacroix. Oh god. <laughs> My bad. Guess what? I'm gonna have some more. So. Uh, this is the, if your house is burning down and you have two hands, then yes. you grab that, obviously. Luckily, I have two kids, so I <laughs> fill both their hands and my wife. Nice. <laughs> Let's get, forget the nice. clothes. See, okay, this is. This is what you thought it was going to be. This is what I thought, but I also haven't seen this in person. That's true. You have not. Oh my gosh, it's so it's light. Easy. Dang, bro. So this is, dang, oh my gosh. Okay, see, this is why. This is why I didn't want to know, because this is genuine, genuine reactions. So this is, let's tell, let's tell the people, this is a Novo Miris. H2. H2. So, uh, Novo, as you know, I have a Cirrus J. Shut the neck. The neck. Yeah. Crazy. Stainless frets. Bound. Sick. Everything. It is just immaculate. Look at the relic. And that thing is like super, I think it's probably sub seven pounds. It's super, super light. light. It's nice. Okay. So let's, let's, uh, let's just talk about this one for a little bit. So, so uh, custom, custom builder out of Nashville. Um, Novo guitars started by Dennis Fano. Um, this is the semi hollow, mm-hmm. uh, body option that they have. Um, we got volume. Mm hmm. Volume? Oh, tone. tone. Volume, tone. Switch. And then selector. Simple. Simple. Um, what pickups are in this bad boy? Um, uh, Fralin. I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's their modern PAF. Is it the Lala or Fralin? I'm not going to be honest. I don't know. I think it's I Fralin. It was, I, think it, I think you're right. I think right. it's Fralin modern PAF. I think you're right. I only have two pickup options for that guitar. It's like the Lullertrons and then these. Yeah. So, how how have you liked this, dude? Uh, I like have had a lot of humbucker guitars, mm-hmm. um, and I've kind of like gone back and forth on them. Like, there's been times where I've never owned a uh, like humbucker guitar. Like, I just moved them. Right. But this thing has been like a nice welcome back to the humbucker world. Mm-hmm. It is so so slick. It's just like. It's crazy. Like, all the necks are the same. Yeah. It feels exactly like mine. It's crazy. So the cool thing about this one is, is this is this is a custom. So it, it's like a 12-month wait for this guitar. Yeah. And 
I actually had a master belt strat that I put up for trade and I put it on the Novo Facebook page and I was like, anybody have a mirror they'd want to trade? And some guy, um, uh, he was like, well, I don't have one to trade, but I have a deposit on one that's going to come in in a couple months. Like, would you be interested in that? I'm like, oh, like change. I was like thinking like, no way he's going right. to want one. Like he's going to spec one, like how I would want it. Right. So, but he sent me the spec and I was like, dang, that is a good spec. Like it's like exact, almost exactly what you, because, because we've talked about these for a while. Sorry. We've talked about these for a while. And, uh, like we've gone back and forth on which model Send we each would other spec. Yeah. <laughs> which model we would spec which way and stuff. And I, like when we first talked about this, I was like, Oh, you spec this, you spec this because this is what you would do. Yeah. But it just happened. It's a good spec. Just happened to turn out that way. And the mother Mary. Yes, sir. Everybody can't forget that. If you watch Monday with Bray, you know about you you know about Mother Mother Mary straps. Mother Mary. Yeah, I know. You put you put me on you put me on Mother Mary. You put me on Nova, so fair exchange, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Sick, sick guitar, bro. So I love just looking at this. Yeah. I love the I love their sparkles. I know. And like you have you have another Nova. You have a J. That's true. Um, with fire or what is it? Firebird pickups. Yeah. In your J. Yeah. And it's a mermaid sparkle, and like their sparkles just. It's like yeah. such big flake. Yeah. This is like, this is, yeah, this isn't normally, I don't even think you can get this finish anymore. I think this is one I don't of the think last so. ones they it's did. It's like Starry Night or something. Yeah, Starry Night. So that's just two of your entire collection. Insane collection. Give it back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, people are probably, if if people don't know guitar, they're probably bored. Yeah, so let's, let's, um. I've been known to put people to sleep with my gear talk before, so. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. So, uh, kind of go back. So, you're at Living Word, MD. Mm-hmm. Um, recently, you guys put out a song, an original. Well, yeah. not put out, but to yeah. your church. Yeah, for sure. Um, what kind of, what responsibility did you have in the writing process of, of that song? So David Harris, shout out. Oh, shout out David Harris, bro. <laughs> I Cheers. can't the I d- I don't know uh, I don't know the schedule, so either David will be I think David's first, so you're giving it away. He'll, he'll see. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> he'll, he'll, it'll already be out by the time you see this. Anyway. Okay. Let's so. let's hear the <clears throat> what responsibility you had in that song. So he had like a a really I mean, it was pretty complete, really. But he had a had a a demo. Oops. <laughs> he had a demo put together um, with um, acoustic guitar, um, drums, and uh, maybe synth bass or something. I can't remember. Uh-huh. But uh, and it was like, dude, can you come in early on a Thursday, which is our practice nights, and you know see what we can do with this? And I had he'd sent it to me a couple of days before. Yeah. And uh like we voice memoed a couple ideas back and forth and I like planned on doing like this slide thing and all this stuff. Well, we get there and like I, I don't I forget what time I showed up, but we had three or four hours to work on it and like it was just it was just going really good. So I mean yeah, I'm totally answering not your question. But <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So basically I just had the bass uh, acoustic uh, and guitar input on it. Mm-hmm. Um but I feel, I mean, not to like give myself too much credit, but I feel like it kind of like gave the song its feel. Yeah. Like, but I can't take all the credit for the parts because like a lot of the parts, like, like I would say 50% of it's me and 50% of it's David, David singing a part and be like, can you play that? I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes. yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously probably not your probably not your first funny song. story about that yeah, that day though when we were recording so we recorded up and like to up into five minutes to practice and i was like dude we should cancel practice and just finish the song <laughs> he's like yeah dude i know but we ended up having practice like it was like super short and then we ended up working on it till like 10 p.m that night and then that's that's basically the the full demo dang so it, it, it was like one of those songs that like 
It, it just, was just flowing. It was just flowing. Like, like we didn't want to quit because it, it all was just made sense. So good. So sorry. No, good. Good for you guys. So obviously, probably, probably not your first song that you've wrote parts for, and probably not your last. Obviously, so. Hope not. No. What uh what kind of inspires like uh a part or like if you're thinking um like do you come into a workshop and you're like oh i have this idea or do you does it come like in the moment when you're like listening to sing like you said listening to david sing and stuff or like i don't know that's a lot what what inspires you uh to write parts so like as far as well, we just had a workshop. Um, I'll start there. We just had a workshop and like what like will inspire me to like a progression or something like a, like, to, like to write a progression like is honestly like guitar tone. Like I, I'll just like hit this sweet spot of like whatever delay and whatever reverb and right. like I'll use, you know, start doing a progression and it'll just like feel good. So I'll record it or whatever. Um, but as far as like a part in a song, um, man, that's honestly, it's like, because I'm not like super um, like I don't like as far as theory goes, like I'm not very good. Same. Like I, I literally <laughs> just start fumbling around until right. something sounds cool. And I kind of work off of that or I, or there's like just like habits that I go to. Yeah. And then I'll like just build know, it off of that, build off of that. So um, that's why probably most everything you hear from me is going to sound the same, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean that kind of, like leads up to the next question kind of perfectly. Cause you said like you have a certain guitar tone in mind or whatever, or yeah. you'll have one dialed up or whatever. Um, so who's, whose tone inspires you? Do you have like a certain, certain artist or certain, you know, guitar player in a band that you like draw your inspiration from? I mean, I think some of the best guitar tone ever is John Mayer on like where the light is, the, li- the live album. Yeah. It's so good. Right. I mean, but at the same time, like I don't, I'm not like going for that tone for church. Like it's, it's not a church yeah. tone, but like, if I just think about the best guitar tone ever, like it's like the belief solo <laughs> on where the light is. It's so yes. freaking amazing. But, um, so like, I don't know why, where I was going, but go ahead. right. But like, like you said, so that, or, um, how, how do you like dial in your own sounds? I guess is because, because like you have you have great guitar tone, thank you. Obviously, so you're a Kemper player, yes. Um, and then you switch out your guitars. How do you like? What's your, what's your go to for like setting up a sound? I guess. I guess that's a better question. Yeah. So, gosh, I mean, I I do feel like part of like what I can bring. Like I like I do feel like part of like as far as like parts and stuff, I feel like I can bring tone to the table. Like yes. I'm I'm not like technical, but I do feel like I can hold my own with like guitar tone and like okay, like we want this part to sound like this. Well, I can I can shape that tone. Um, but as far as like choosing, um, like 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 starting from the ground up with mm-hmm. the tone. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I told I told you. I know I know it's bad. But as uh, I continue to drink it. Yeah, I mean, it's, we're just going with it now at this point. But as far as, like, building tone from the ground up, I mean, uh, I mean. Do you, I, do you have, like, uh, certain amp models that you like? Like, yeah. what's your what's your go-to amp? I'm, I'm a Vox. I'm more of a Vox guy. Like, I love the AC30 sound. Yeah. But, so, so that's, I, like, my, that's, like, my floor. Like, you, I start there. It's, yeah. like, oh, I'll pick a, pick a Vox. Like, something like that. Like, a Vox or a Matchless uh, DC30 yeah or whatever so i typically don't go for the i i love in real life like a vox is one of my favorite amps of all Mm -hmm. time but i never use a vox profile for some reason or 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 model or whatever wow i don't know why (laughs) (laughs) you're dead to me (laughs) no but uh and you know because it's unobtainable like i like the dumb i go for dumbbells on the kemper like like a lot of time but now solid Actually, now I've been using uh, PRS Dallas too. Oh, uh, which right. I honestly don't know. I think it's a six L six amp. I think it's probably Fender. I think you're right. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna double check. I, I'm curious. Just, I just started playing. It. I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. That's cool. I don't. But that's. Uh, I'll start with a clean tone. Yeah. Get that dialed in. Um, and 
like if I'm if I'm working off of a clean, a lot of times I try to go for like edge of breakup. Uh huh. So do you, uh, in the Kemper do you use uh, like a specific drive or do you or do you guys usually? I feel like more. I don't know if this is true. I don't play Kemper. I feel like more. There's the Lacroix. Yeah. I feel like yeah. more people uh, usually use like amp drive instead of overdrive. Is is that the case? Do you use overdrive profiles or do you use? Depends uh, on the amp model. Yeah. Um, with a PRS, I actually use pedal, a pedal drive. Okay. The Kemper, the, it's called the Kemper drive. Um, I set it up like super transparent. Um, usually like run mix like seventy like a, eighty percent to like get a blues like a, breaker or something. Yeah, to get the to get the clean tone um coming through uh with that with that dallas it's like clean sorry <laughs> it's like people it's, are just gonna be like what <laughs> it's, it's fine yeah i'm sorry no it's funny um so and then um same with the dumble actually like the dumble stuff i don't like the dumble drive stuff so i, mm -hmm. I run clean um and then use like the camper drive yeah uh jump back into this it is 6l6 okay Sorry, it took me forever to find it. No. Cool. Anyway, um, what's some of your what's some of your favorite uh, like effect? What's some of your go to effects? Like obviously, obviously we all use overdrive, reverb, delay. What's something like something main something that someone may not be like? Oh, you're using that? Is the, is there? Do you have something like that? There's a couple like a like, secret weapon. There's a couple little secret things. So. Uh, one of the things I'll use, they call it, I think they call it chromatic pitch on the Kemper. Nice. But basically an octaver. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I don't throw in low octaves, I throw in high octaves. Cool. But mix down to where it's super subtle. Mm -hmm. Like you're not going to like listen to that and be like, what the heck is going it's on? It's not like punching it through. Just, it's just adding dimension. Nice. Um, so that's definitely one of those things that like like I don't feel like most people would do. Or, yeah. Um, I love octave on on my base yeah i like to throw that in there and then there's like, there's some other stuff like like weird stuff like this one this last patch i made for one of our songs like i'm using fuzz and then i put a delay in front of the fuzz oh cool so i'm gonna have to try that with like real battles it's it's cool or like because i used to run well i used to run a vox ac30 uh -huh. and a bad cat um nice in stereo that's on my i should i should buy a bad cat and bad cat i'm pretty sure had a, an effects loop but the vox did not so i would run those like hot hot yeah and run strymon and everything into the front of them and like you'd think it'd sound bad but man it gives it like this this character like 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 delay in front of a driven amp like it's not typical it's not like what you know, you, th you think should be done. Right. But it's cool. Can be cool. Not always cool. Yeah. Cool. So more, more guitar talk. I'm sorry. It no. just, it's just going to happen. Um, I think now's a good time for something. Act, act, okay. Act like you throw some. Okay. You're just going to have to, you're just going to have to imagine. I forgot my note cards. <laughs> okay. This is a new ish segment that we like to call this or that okay? okay so this i i don't let anybody know about this so this is always oh, like always always okay. in the moment gotcha. so you're like double this is like yeah okay. Yeah, okay we're just gonna get into it okay rules are simple this or that okay okay ready guitar or bass guitar <laughs> okay i feel bad saying that is that weird <laughs> i feel guilty i'll allow it i'll allow it. okay smoked or grilled Smoked. Okay. Cars or trucks? Trucks. Okay. Uh, Fender or Gibson? Fender. All right. Modeler or amp and pedals? I have to say modeler. Oh, okay. Just all because right. of what all I'm right, doing. All right. Like, all right. Uh, pizza or pasta? Hmm. Pasta. These are the hard-hitting questions. Okay. And our last question for this or that. Right now, Bethel or Elevation? Bethel. Okay, all right. And then I usually throw the cards at the camera. So yeah. Okay, so that has CGI. been. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, you should you should cut that in from like a different episode, like or just just 
It would be oh, okay. All right. So like really obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, we're getting towards the end. I'll wrap this up a little. Um, I got a couple more questions. Okay. So I know this might backfire on me, but I'm gonna ask anyway. <laughs> I know. I know. I asked you. I forgot. I forgot that I had this question. That's why I asked. That's why I asked you to do this. So I, I feel like this is a different question now. Um, so I said, if your house is burning down, you grab one guitar. But this question is, what is your favorite guitar at the moment? So, like, I, I only have three guitars. But I kind of cycle through, like, loving one more than the other. Sure. Do you get that? Absolutely. Okay, so what is your favorite guitar at, like, right now as we sit? Gosh, that, dude, I don't, that might be harder than... <laughs> the harder. <laughs> the problem is, is cause I'm thinking about selling it, but oh, probably the freaking Saris J. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what that's what I'm saying, bro. You get. Yeah. I get in those Novo Saris J. Yeah, I get in those. Uh, I don't know what you call it. It's just like I'm hoping the Paisley F1. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Whatever. That okay. Was, that, I feel so stupid. Whatever. I'll. I'm just gonna shake my head. Okay. All right. I got another question. This is another fan favorite around here that we usually ask everybody. This this is going to be hard. Well, I don't know. It might not be hard for you. It's hard for a lot of people. Um, what are your top three favorite bands or artists at at the at the moment? Because just like guitars, our music our music taste shifts. Mine has been, so we haven't recorded these, uh, we've kind of recorded these back to back, so like my list has pretty much stayed the same, but um, I'm always intrigued to hear others. Top three. My problem is, is outside of like worships that we're, that we're doing, like I haven't listened to that much music lately. I feel like that's super weird to say, but Chris Stapleton for sure right now. Nice. Um. Is it Bethel just came out with a new album? Probably. Is it the one with uh, Gable Price? Oh yeah, yeah. The yeah. Homecoming, the Homecoming EP. That album. Yeah. So I'm I'm choosing basically, I guess that's album slash artist. I guess that's fine. I'll um, <laughs> and one more. One more. Ariel Posen. Oh, nice. That's yeah. a good one. See, okay, see, but you I guess that wasn't that hard. Yeah, you didn't have that much trouble. That's okay. All right. Um. All right, so what what advice do you have for like a younger musician, like just starting out? Now that you've had all this experience under your belt, uh, what would you tell like thirteen year old you? I guess. So I mean, are we are we? Not, not you, but are we saying like that person's gonna play in church? Yeah, why not? I would honestly say just like practice the parts, play the song, how it should be played. Um, that's one of the big things like overplaying is worse than underplaying. Um, chops are cool, but like it's, yeah. it's, there's it's, a time and a place. Yeah, there's a time and a place for it. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. That, <laughs> I know <laughs> it's tough too. I mean, like if, if I could go back in time, I would probably spend more time like wood shedding. Like I just said chops are, you know, not for mm-hmm. all the time, but like, like just getting my know. dexterity and yeah, like yeah. being, you know, trying to be faster and better. Mm-hmm. Not that I would use it all the time, but, uh, exactly. I think that's, I think that I've heard, I've heard a couple of people say that and I, I tend to agree is, um, a good musician knows when not to play right. or what not to play. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, now that that I'm, you know, 32, like I realized that I had a lot more time when mm-hmm. I was 13 yeah. than I do now, like and I should have been practicing more. Right. Um, which I did practice a lot at times, but there's times when I didn't practice any more than I do now, mm-hmm. so all right, man, practice. That's that's the biggest thing. Good deal. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Do, are your do your are your kids showing any musical in- interest? Yeah. So, uh, Denver Paisley sings all the time, which is hilarious. Nice. Like writes, like 
I shouldn't say writes, but it's like she makes, makes a little up. song. Yeah, it's, oh. it's funny as heck. <laughs> but um, Denver, oop, that would be our dinner. Hey, <laughs> that's all right. Krusty Krab Pizza is the pizza absolutely. Pizza, 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 pizza. So anyway, um, your children. Yes. So Denver, uh, he expressed some interest in guitar. Sick. And uh, <laughs> he wanted, like I was, I was, I had some paint out there um, painting a guitar and he saw this little like copper vial of copper like tint for paint. Nice. And he's like, he's like, dad, I want a guitar and I want it that color. I'm like, <laughs> well, the only way we're going to get that is if I build it. So actually on Stumac, I found this little mini telecaster kit and so bought that and built it for him That's so cool. gave it to him for christmas i almost i almost kind of forgot about that i guess i guess we can go into it is that you build your own stuff too bro yeah i'm get i'm getting there so that's awesome i i don't know I, i've been talking to you about this i want to build i don't know if i should tell i want to build a monday with bray guitar i'm just gonna say it i want to build a sweet. monday with bray i think that would be cool and something I don't know that I can just use for demos and stuff, but it. it's on the it's on the chopping board it's on the drawing board I guess. All right. I think we should do it. Mate, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right, bro. Post your comments. <laughs> Y'all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Put it in the comments. Do you want to see a Monday with Bray guitar? And what style? Exactly. Uh, well, let the people decide. Yeah. Sort of, sort of. I'm, I'm gonna S or T. This is, this is mine. So I'm gonna do it anyway. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we can talk about it a little bit. I, I, well, I mean S or T. Let them choose S or T. Okay, Strat or Telly. That's right, I mean. right, right. I, I kind of want to do, cause I'm, I'm on like a Solus kick. So like Novo. You guys need to go look at these, 100 percent to know what we're talking about. But. Nova does a model called a Solus. I I like the F one. You like the M one. I I don't I like care. Both, yeah, I, yeah <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. I could do either or. But I, like you said, I don't have very many humbucker guitars. I have one with a neck humbucker, but I think it would be cool to do a one pickup. You seen humbucker. that that? It's like burgundy sparkle Frank that has the one bridge humbucker. Yes, dude, that guitar. That's yeah, butt. something like that. So. Be so I, rad. I was thinking, like, we'll let you guys decide. I was thinking a strat with um just one humbucker in it. I think That'd it would sweet. people would be like, What? What is that? I think it'd be cool. So Tom DeLong strat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly. like it, does it even have knobs? Maybe one. I think it's got he's one. got a volume knob and exactly. that's it. You don't even need you don't even need a volume no, knob. No. Just plug it in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I think we'll wrap this up. Do you have you have anything else? This could go on for hours. I know. Do you yeah. have anything else you wanna you wanna tell the people or ask me or whatever? I what's your favorite color? I already know this. Red. Color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that, that's, that's my. What's your favorite color? Red. Okay. See. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now they're definitely getting bored. <laughs> they're like, this is the same. This is the same two people. Okay. <laughs> Ten anyway. years difference, same person. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this. I have well. First of all, I have been Brayden. This has been D, and this has been Monday with Bray. Uh, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and comment down in the comments where you comment. And we'll we'll see you next time. Just don't un- unsubscribe because of me, please. <laughs> this is lit- We are literally experiencing a pizza delivery right now at this very moment. This could be in the bloopers or something.